Hey there guys, welcome back for another Warhammer Imperium painting video. This week we are painting this guy from issue 21 and 22 of the magazine. You can find the reviews for those up in the cards there. But uh, yeah, if you want to see how I paint him, stay tuned. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. So starting off, you can see I've got the model broken into or unassembled in three parts here. The legs, the backpack and the main body. Now the reason for this is just so that I can get to the uh, inside here with the Rakarth flesh and also be able to uh, paint the front of the legs. So as I said, I'm using Rakarth flesh here. Now for the body part, I've gone ahead and primed it in grey. You could of course do it in black if you wanted to. Um, this for me just makes the it easier to get the lighter colours on. Um, but due to there being um, you know, a bit of metallics on here, some people may prefer to do it in black. But we are doing it in grey, so here we go. So. All I'm doing is just getting the inside of the cloak with a good two to three thinned layers of Rakarth flesh, getting it nice and opaque. And also on his arms, he has a little bit of exposed um, sleeve. As for the trim on the sort of the bottom of the cloak and around the hood, this will be Rakarth flesh but it is much easier to do it towards the end of the model once we've done the red and it's a final detail with the cloak. So I'll let that dry and then move on to the, uh, the next steps. Okay, so moving on to the legs now. He's got these cables uh, dangling down between his legs and also the lower portions of his uh, legs so from the knee down are uh, sort of robotic or synthetic so these are just going to get a coat of lead belcher now i'm going to go all over this even the back um not too much of the back can see be seen on some of these models um, due to the cloaks being in the way but i like to paint them just in case as the cloaks don't touch all the way to the ground you can see up behind them a little bit and this way just ensures that we get a nice coverage um, for the model. He then has the um, the thigh plates on on his thighs, um, sort of like layered plates, and also a groin piece. These would also be done in the metal. As for the three cables between his legs, on cables on these models, um, the Skitari, so all of the Rangers, they will have the cables painted in the same way, in that anything that has a sort of serrated look to it, like a corrugated look, um, will be metallic and the other pipes will be black so any anything that's smooth is black anything that's not smooth uh, gets a coat of lead belcher and obviously whilst doing this I can work on the backpack as well now with the backpack I'm just giving it a straight all over lead belcher and then I can go back in and uh, tidy up the details later on Okay, so I've now assembled the model and if you were careful or smart when spray painting or priming, if like me you applied a small amount of blue tack to the areas that would join, so the under or the bottom of his body and the top of his legs, you can then use plastic glue um, to join them together. If however you sprayed over those areas, you will either need to scrape them clean so that it's back to plastic or use super glue. Um, plastic glue will just melt the paint and go into a mush and then it won't bond. So make sure that you either use super glue or plastic to plastic with plastic glue. Anyway, now that I've got them assembled, I can start moving on to all of the metallic areas. So again, using the lead belcher, I'm just giving all of the front armour here and the pipes a quick coat of the lead belcher and obviously anything on the back. Now some of these guys 
Um, obviously weapons vary. This one being the unit leader, he has the baton and the pistol, both of which I cover with lead belcher. Also the faces, they wear masks, uh, so, so they'll be metallic as well, they'll get lead belcher. Just picking up a little bit of uh, blue tack there, as you can see stuck to the, uh, the model. This is where I would have the backpack, so I've left it there. Uh, when priming and that way I've now got clean plastic underneath just make sure you remember to remove it all <laughs> anyway the weapon and the pistol will also get a complete coat of the lead belcher and then we can touch up the other sort of areas later on so uh, <laughs> I'll finish removing that and uh, we'll uh, come back once I've got all this lead belcher coverage Right, so next up we are going to work on the cloak. So rather than add a null oil to the, uh, the finished metallics, what I'm looking to do here is get all of the base colours down and then we can work them back up. So obviously here I'm going down and applying the red. Um, I've missed out that pipe for now as it's going to be black. Um, so obviously we're just looking to get the, the red down. So that will be the cloak here, the sleeves and the hood. Some of the models, they do have a little bit of um, underarm showing. Obviously, make sure that you're painting the right area red or metallic, depending on whether it's a solid plate or some of the cloth armor. Um, it tends to sort of come from the back and then disappear behind some plate armor. OK, so next I'll apply some non-oil over all of the metallic areas so anything that's silver will get a good wash of non-oil letting this not only sink into the recesses but quite heavily stain the metal as well i'm not leaving huge um, puddles or anything but you do want to get some staining in there and uh, just sort of tone down that metal look slightly I'll then leave that for about 15 minutes to fully dry and then move on to the next stages. So once all that non-oil has dried fully, I'm now taking some Balthazar gold and I'm going to use this as a um, sort of a brassy copper type look. Um, I imagine these guys to be a little bit snobby and like... Um, you know just a little bit of embellishment on their armor so what I'm doing here is applying it to the trim um, there is a small trim that goes around the armor plate and around the chest piece the belt buckles just to keep it all in uniform and I pick off um, the plates you know one or two plates on the thigh guards um, and if they have sort of multiple layered shoulder pauldrons some of them have like uh, three different plates usually i'll paint the middle one um, with this balthazar gold as well just to have it sort of stand out a bit and then for the pistol on this one i just basically have a look at it and think where where i think the metal needs breaking up a little bit um, and what i mean by that is the color at the moment it's all silver and I want this to be broken up a little bit. So what I'll do is paint the um, sort of the front end and the the back portion of those barrels in this, and then also the handle. And there's like this little knob, knobbly bit right at the front. Um, looks like a, a set of eyes either side of the uh, the front of the pistol. I'll also obviously do that. And then uh, for the rod that he's holding, the baton. Obviously, I'll do the sort of the top portion. The I, I assume it's some sort of vent guard, and then sort of the, the area that's near his hand. And then on the top end, I'll just pick out the spiked part. So you've got these four sort of bars that come down, and I'll pick them out. And then there's two circular rings that are fairly smooth. I think one has a few studs on it, um, just below that section. I'll also do them in the uh, Balthazar gold as well. Again, it's just to break up the the metal a little bit. So 
So moving on, I'll now take some Abaddon Black and I'm going to go in and paint in all of the black portions. So as I mentioned earlier, this will be any of the smooth pipes. And obviously Abaddon Black is going to go over in you know, one, maybe two coats is going to be, apply nicely, which is why I did the silver first rather than trying to pick out these details. There's less black than there is silver. So put all the silver down, then go back in and touch up the black. So obviously any smooth cables on him, anywhere that is supposed to be black, such as his trousers, um, they will be in black. If they've got a little bit of coloring on them, then obviously I'll touch that up as well. And then also he has the, the Adeptus Mechanicus emblem on the front of his chest, which is a cog with a skull. The left, if you split it down the middle, the right hand side of the cog will be black and the left hand side will be white. And the left hand side of the skull will be black and the right hand will be white. So they contrast against each other. So obviously I'll go in and uh, paint that as well. The backpack for now I am leaving and I will move on to um, towards the end. What I'm looking to do is get the map, get the man, get the model finished um, and then I can apply the back backpack and then finish that part. Um, that way I can get to the details that, I'll be, that would be behind the backpack. Okay, so next up I've got some Agrax Earthshade here. And unlike the Nuln Oil, I'm not applying this as a wash over all of the red. I'm looking to use this more as a glaze for the shaded areas. Now, if I look at the model from the front, my highlight or my light source is coming from his top right. So my top left as I look at him. And so the right hand side of his cloak here is going to be a little bit darker and have more shadow. So this side, I'm going to obviously glaze over a little bit, get it darker. And as we work around to the other side, it will be a little bit lighter. From the back, the light source will obviously be the opposite way around. The light source is going to be coming from his right. Um, as we look at him, it will also be our right. And then bearing in mind that the side that I'm painting here, the light source is actually coming from, but you're still going to get a little bit of shading in those folds. So again, I'm applying the Agrax Earth Shade as a glaze to just shade in these areas and create a little bit of shadow. All right, so next up, I'm gonna start adding in the mid-tone um, slash highlight tone. Now, the reason I say that is the original Mephiston Red is more of the lighter shadows with the Agrax Earthshade glazed areas as the deeper shadows. The Evil Sun Scarlet I'm applying now is the true mid-tone. So this is the color that most of the cloak will be. Um, this is the color edge highlights will be. This is thinned down slightly so I can apply it um, almost like a glaze but it's a little bit obviously a little bit thicker. And you'll notice that I'm using a back and forth motion in some areas um, almost like a feathering off um, with the glaze and what this is going to do is just create a little bit of texture within those sort of lighter colored areas or those more high lit areas obviously the whole time I'm doing this I'm bearing in mind or keeping in mind the direction of the light source and what areas I want to be um, brighter and which areas I want to be darker. So his left side, as we are looking at it now, is going to get less of this as it's still going to have light on it. So it will get some, but it's also the more shaded area. So it's going to stay a little bit, bit more the Mephiston red color. All right, so now that the cloak is done for the most part, you can see I've now attached the backpack. And this is because I didn't want to add edge highlights to anywhere that was going to be behind the backpack. Obviously that would be in shadow and wouldn't have as much of a highlight. So I'm now taking the Abaddon Black and 
just the same as before. I'm applying this to any of the smooth pipes and also some of these backpacks, they have uh, little pouches and stuff on them. So I'm picking them out in black as well. Um, my Skatari are all going to have black trousers and then black leather uh, pouches just to simplify how much I have to paint. So you can see what I'm painting here are actually the leather straps that hold the, I assume it's what holds the backpack onto him. Um, to me, they just look like they just go around the pack, but yeah, they are leather straps. And then following that, I will take the Balthazar gold and go in and paint in the uh, bronzy brass type areas so obviously we've got this um, I assume it's some sort of incense ball at the bottom here um, any of the ends of the cables that look like uh, terminal connectors I will paint them as well now he seems to have some sort of hand box communication thing dangling there I'll leave that in uh, in the silver but the main panel of the console on his back I wanted to stand out a little bit and so I'll paint that with the Balthazar gold as well and also the lamp or whatever it is on his side and the antenna I will go in and paint the connecting um, cylinder piece in the Balthazar gold as well as the rings that go around the antenna again this is choice uh, just to break up some of the the color and separate those elements a little bit it's entirely up to you how you do them or what parts you paint uh, but I do feel that this looks great when done in uh, you know this way so next up I'll take some Mechanica standard gray and slightly thin down I'm just going to use this as a small highlight on any of the cables and the peaks of the folds on his um, trousers because it's under the cloak it's you know pretty much in shadow so I'll just apply a few light highlights of this doesn't need too much and then obviously some of the cables and stuff um, throughout the model will get a thin line of this as well just for a little bit of edge highlighting I'm not going for a super clean posh finish with this it's just enough to get them on the uh, tabletop for some upcoming battle reports I have planned for you guys so next up I'll use some white scar and as I mentioned earlier the cog and skull here are split into opposite halves between black and white kind of like a yin yang symbol so obviously I'm applying white to the right hand side of the skull here and then the left hand side of the cog uh, behind the skull. Obviously being careful not to go too far over that center line to just meet up and neaten up the black. I'll then use the white scar for any areas that are going to have um, some sort of glow. So for this particular guy, it's this small lens that I'm doing here his eye lenses, um, his baton at the the impact end. You can see here I'm just painting between the bronze pieces as this is going to have sort of like a, an electrified um, charge look to it. And then on the backpack, obviously he's got a little screen there and a, a little glowing uh, orb as well as the what looks like a radiator type thing on the uh, the top that will also be done uh, white for the uh, the glow later on so moving back to the cloak now I'm taking some wild rider red um, a little bit thin down and I'm just running an edge highlight along the bottom um, sort of you know right along the bottom edge of the cloak and I'll also apply it as a thin glaze um, over some of the brighter areas on the um, the right hand side of the cloak and then obviously the arms and the 
head will get uh, the same treatment. I'm not doing a full, um, you know, right the way around every connection kind of highlight, just in those brighter areas, you know, around the peaks of the folds and the curves and things like that. You'll notice I've also painted in the purity seal here um, with the wild, the evil sun scarlet, and then I just touch the edges with the wild rider red, just for uh, a little bit of a highlight. And with that, the cloak is now fully finished. So now I'm just taking some ethermatic blue contrast paint, and I'm going to apply this not only as a sort of a charred look to uh, the electrified areas of the model, but this also works great for quick lenses. Um, it settles into the edges and leaves some of the white slightly tainted, a very light blue, but it gives a great lens effect. And this also works great as an electrical charge or plasma charge. Simply apply it a few layers. It will take a few coats to get a good blue stain on the top. Um, but unlike lenses, you do want a bit more of a heavier blue within the, the recesses. So a couple of layers of this, letting each one fully dry for about 10 minutes between. And uh, you can get some nice plasma glow as well as the, uh, the lenses. Okay, so for the purity seals, I wanted to keep this nice and simple. So I'm using some Ushapti Bone. I'll paint this on, get it, you know, nice and opaque. I'll then give this a quick wash with um, some Seraphin Sapia, which has a slightly uh, reddish tint to it. Let that dry and then just pick off the edges again with the Ushapti Bone and then go in with some... Uh, very fine Abaddon black and just do a few squiggles to make it look like it has been written on. Nice and simple, nothing overly complicated. And then finally I'm just taking some iron breaker here which is slightly lighter or shinier than the uh, lead belcher. I don't want anything um, super bright like mithril silver or anything like that. So just the iron breaker and then I'm applying that again just to the edges of the metal plating and then down the or along the top of any sort of cylindrical um, piece. The corrugated type pipe work, I will make sure that there isn't too much paint on the brush, um, almost like a dry brush, and then just run it straight down fairly quickly so that the brush just touches the tops of each of the ridges and doesn't bounce in between them filling you know the inner area for the pistol obviously just giving it some edge highlights um, down the length of the barrel and all of the smaller barrels and then once that is done the model is finished and there it is guys one completed skatari ranger Obviously, I've still got his base to go. I'm a little undecided on what I'm going for the bases for my Skatari or my uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. So as of yet, yeah, he still needs um, some base and I'm thinking maybe a Martian crust type look that typically goes with these guys and obviously they're painted in the Mars scheme. So it will probably end up being that. Anyway, that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope it helps some of you out in painting uh, your Skitari. On a note, if you have stayed this long, then obviously you are enjoying my videos. And as you stayed this long, you get to hear about my Discord channel. So yes, I've set up a Discord. I've had a few people um, on my Twitch streams uh, request one. So I've got a link down in the description now for a Discord and if you would like to support the channel further I have set up a Patreon with a £2 tier um, which will obviously have some private or personal videos for um, Patreon as well as updates and things like that that I'm working on and also Patreon members will get access to a VIP area of the uh, Discord which is only for Twitch 
or um, Patreon subscribers. So there is that if you want to support a little bit more. Otherwise, Discord there for you guys to share what you're working on, um, ask me questions or ask each other questions, help each other out, and hopefully start building a, a little community up. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you ever so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you have not yet subscribed and would like to subscribe, there is a button for that too, right next to the like one. Hit it. And if you have recently subscribed, then a huge warm welcome to the Inner Circle. Thank you for your support. But until next time, guys, as always, take it easy and keep painting those minis.